Fashion's a cutthroat business. She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, episode, what are we at, five, six? I'm losing count now. <laughs> but this is the one where um, Jennifer has to deal with Titania having trademarked the name She-Hulk. So I'm starting to wonder if my enjoyment of these is completely mood dependent. So if you watched my last review, you might have remember I basically said, I enjoyed this more than the other ones, but I can't really explain why it's significantly better than previous episodes. The thing is, I didn't like this one as much as the last one, but I'm still hard-pressed to say that there's anything distinctly wrong with this that wasn't also present in the previous one. I'm starting just to think that whether or not I can enjoy this one is just 100% dependent on my own mood and whether or not I'm just in a state where I'm going to roll with what it's doing. And I guess today, I that wasn't as much. <laughs> so, like, the odd thing is, I actually kind of feel like the, the review and my thoughts wouldn't be that different if I had liked it more. I'm probably going to point out the same things that were kind of good and the same things that kind of weren't. The difference is really going to be, in this case, me saying, yeah, and the stuff that I didn't like as much dragged it down a bit more, whereas if I'd seen it in a better mood, I'd probably be saying, eh, it wasn't great, but it didn't bug me. So, I don't know. I'm in this weird thing where it feels like the episode qualities are kind of static, but my perception of them is like in this weird elliptical orbit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this thing and me at this point. Um, I think part of it, <clears throat> I think part of it might be the the courtroom stuff. Actually, that might be a little bit of a difference. So, like, we had some courtroom stuff last time. Um, but the thing was, that was courtroom stuff dealing with absolute absurdity. You know, you had witnesses being brought in by sling ring, and you had, you know, issues of actual magic, not just like trade secrets, but like actual mystical powers. And I think the injection of that amount of fantastical elements made me a lot more forgiving of how not uh, legally sound any of the courtroom stuff is. Whereas here, while yes, it involves She-Hulk and She-Hulk has superpowers, so does Titania, I guess, but it's just, it's just a straight up trademark dispute. And when it's a very straightforward thing that exists in real life, the fact that this is not how any degree of court proceedings work at all, um, yeah, that that weighs on it more in the absence of more fantastical stuff. And it is just kind of a case where, like, at this point, I'm burdened with knowledge as I've as I've gotten older and either, um, you know, seen stuff broken down by actual lawyers or uh, had, you know, my own uh, in, <laughs> involvements in court systems and the in juries or or, you know, things like that. I, I don't have a criminal record that I'm aware of. Should I check that? Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. But, uh, you know, having some degree of knowledge, like it's hard for me to just sit down and swallow this stuff now because I'm like, well, no, that you 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 can't just no no the judge wouldn't allow no the you can't what do you ah um so and and it's just it just flows better when there's a lot more well this is clearly not meant to in any way represent reality elements in there like um Wong bringing in uh Madison with two ends and a Y but not where you think in you know into the court to you know through a portal and stuff like that 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 that. That breaks the expectation that this is going to be in any way realistic. But in a case like they're dealing with this time, it's like, well, it's it's actually a very true-to-life case. It's just one of the clients is green. Um, I don't have too much to say about Jamila Jamil. Um, in the part, like, she works for this part. It's very, very, very similar to the part that she played in uh, The Good Place, just a little bit more outwardly uh, nasty as a as a personality, whereas the character she played there was a lot more um, just sort of... She, she thought she was a good person. I'm not sure Titania does think she's a good person. Um, 
she probably wants other people to think she is. I don't think she thinks she is, though. But so, like, there's little tweaking there. But other than that, like, pretty similar. And she's fine for that. She's good for that. I'm not going to dwell on this, but I'm just going to acknowledge it because otherwise I suspect it'll come up in the comments. She had a not great back and forth um, over the issue of pronouns uh, in social media profiles a couple of weeks ago on Twitter. Um, super short version is uh, apparently a non-binary person got kind of nasty at her. I don't know what the original statement was, and for what I'm about to say, it doesn't matter. Uh, Jamil then misgendered them. Uh, which I do believe was done accidentally, but she then went off on a whole thing about how it was the non-binary person's fault. That person had their pronouns in their bio, but it was their fault they were misgendered because they didn't have their pronouns in the username. And she got on a weird hill about that. It wasn't great. It's not worth like canceling her over, but it was like, just stop, just stop talking. So I don't think that's inhibiting my ability to enjoy this. Um, it does have, it is what I consider to be a yellow flag. So I now kind of like, I'm side-eyeing, <laughs> waiting for another shoe to drop. But at this point, it's like a, well, that was a little dumb. But I don't think, I don't think it's inhibiting my ability to enjoy this. The stuff with the fashion designer was just very predictable. I mean, anytime you see a fashion designer character in a show like this, it's either going to be, uh, t you know, based on Tim Gunn or Edna Mode. In this case, it's kind of a combination of the two, and it's incredibly predictable and flamboyant in the exact ways that you expect a fashion-focused character played by a man to be. And eh. I got a couple chuckles out of the knockoff merchandise, actually. Avengers and Avengers. I like it says Avengers. Oh, I've got Avengers. I did. I did like. I gen I genuinely laughed at that joke. I thought that was actually a pretty good joke. I think maybe part of the other issue with this particular episode is this one is leaning. I think possibly the most of any of these episodes so far on cringy humor because you know Jen has to parade these embarrassing dates. Uh, in front of the court in order to to clear her name. Like, and you can feel the Ugh, behind that. And then like, before we get to the, to the knockoff merchandise, the whole thing of like, no, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is just a boba tea place. And it's like, that drags on long enough to give me that cringing feeling. And like, I just, I just hate that. I hate that feeling. I hate the cringe feeling. I don't find it entertaining. I don't find it amusing. I, empathize too much with people made to feel foolish to ever laugh at them for that it sucks it sucks to feel like an idiot and it's really hard to display that in entertainment and actually entertain me it's uh yeah so that doesn't help certainly so i'm not sure what else there is to say i kind of all said it at the front end like it's not significantly better or worse than what we've had it's just i guess i wasn't in the mood this morning <laughs> as much um oh um so we had our our tease for um for matt murdoch for daredevil which would have been cool if they hadn't already revealed him in like a mid-season trailer last week so pff, yeah we already knew he was showing, I mean, he was rumored before that this would have been fun and it might have even got me kind of like, oh, nice. I can't wait. But like, I knew, I knew. I've seen clips of him in this show. Stop doing that, Marvel, or really any of you. Any of you out there, if something is at the tail end, if it's a button on, on the show or if it's a bonus scene, don't put it in trailers or don't put what it is setting up to happen later in the series in trailers. Don't do that. Ah, stupid. Oh, we got to market and get people interested in it again. Then don't build it as a surprise. Pick one. Stop trying to do both. And that's not really the show's fault. That's a marketing department fault. For as much as I did get annoyed by that, like, I'm not going to hold that against the show. I'm going to hold that against Disney's uh, marketing department. But, you know, 
not exactly the same people. So yeah, that's uh, that's my thoughts on the latest episode of She-Hulk. It was uh, it was a little rough at times on this one, but it was okay. Like personality wise, um, Jen's still largely working for me. Nikki's grown on me. Actually, Nikki's fun. I kind of like her, and I liked the other lawyer whose name I suddenly cannot remember. But the one who was representing Jen in court, I actually rather liked her. Um, I hope we see more of her. That was cool, and I liked I liked their bonding over drinks. And then it turned into a cringe moment when Jen was like, I'm glad we're friends now. And the other one was like, are we? And so, like, even that, they did turn into a bit of a bit of a social faux pas cringe bit. But uh, I, I, did, I did still like her, and they're fun together. So, yeah, there we go. What were your thoughts on this one? Whatever they were, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon is how I pay the bills around here. Any amount you're able to help is of great assistance. Even if you can't do that, like, share, subscribe, all help me out, but don't worry too much about that either, because at the end of the day, we take a relaxed attitude around here, so you can just come on back next time you need a break. Time to give my thanks to my highest supporting patrons. That would include Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfula, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Oliver B., Melinda Walters, Imu Delki, Theotha Boyd, Becky Sparks, Pranabi Likes the Poodle, Zach, Idolin, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Adam RDL Taylor, Shane Ross, Shayla Gourlay, Brendan LaRose, and TT. <laughs> if you want your name said while these guys try and distract me, consider looking at the rewards of my Patreon. 